Good morning, folks. We have a mountain to move today, and our video from last night will go down as one of our best. Hope you didn't miss it. Right now, we're kicking off at spaceweathernews.com, and if you didn't catch it in the opening, watch the left side. Filament citing irreconcilable differences and erupting in violent fashion off the incoming limb. Another at the end as well. You'll be able to see both the initial eruption and the second smaller one here this morning in just the last few hours. This region is turning into face Earth and the X-ray flux is already on the rise. While this eruption will miss the Earth, future eruptions may not. And by the way, watch the shockwave ripple through the corona after the eruption. This is a sign that the CME releases are becoming more powerful as we head up into the Zarkova sunspot maximum. Come on, that's funny. Release clearly visible on Soho Lasco this morning as well, heading up and away. We'll get a quick look from Stereo A here showing the point of the blast active region is heading into face Earth next. By the way, this marks a sharp uptick on the sun as the day before a nice release came off the far side. Again, not relevant to the Earth, but taken all together, the sun is waking up once again. Up next, Starlinks tore across the central U.S. around 5 a.m. Central Time. I did manage to get a background star in there as a guidance for the motion of the satellites. It is really cool to see these up there. Speaking of cool, if the title doesn't tell you why last night's video is a monster, I don't know what will. It was a point-by-point -point explanatory video for both the climate world and for those of us who could really use some help in these conversations. Here's a heap of help. Last night's video is linked below this one. Starting slowly here with more from the sun as a nice gamma signature associated with the CME eruption is reported. It's not that these are unheard of unless of course you are a climate model in which case no the sun is just an ultraviolet light and nothing more. On the earth side of things, aurora triggered by those CMEs are becoming more understood as oxygen troughs in the natural waveforms of the atmosphere create those dune and stripe patterns noticed quite often in the far northern reaches of Scandinavia, like Elsa North. Anyway, let's go back to this list because we're going to be putting up more framing on the foundation. One of the most important and ironic aspects of the entire discussion is that even if they are right about everything else, A8, melting ice at the poles triggers ocean shutdowns and rapid cooling. Here, as they describe the strength of those heat transports in the sea and how critical they are for deglaciation, we can look at those transports shutting down in modern times and we should be able to figure out what's on deck for us next. We've got two more new ones in the global electric circuit, B5, affecting from both solar flares and solar wind coupling. The ionospheric modulation and excitement from space weather is how those rapid forcings are completed. And provided you can get someone to translate the remainder of this paper for you from Russian, the electrically minded are going to flip over what they've found in terms of what I can only call geomagnetic or solar triggered thunderstorms. Anyone who has our textbook knows chapter six is all about the papers on space weather and human health. Here's one that builds on the second level of those correlations, as circadian rhythm is one of the disrupted elements for those susceptible to space weather, seen that in a lot of papers, from the auroral light to radio frequencies of the reverberating fields to the induced electric currents. And also for all of the statistical correlations on space weather and cognitive disruption, this ties those two things together quite nicely. Last but not least, folks, this is the fourth, quote, impossible nova we've reported in the last two years. They keep having to, quote, rewrite what is possible. But of course, the point is the validity of the examination we've done over the last two years on how their nova bucket needs to get so much bigger if they want to accurately characterize events in the cosmos. This is no different than the no ejection nova or the one smaller than most solar flares or the recurrent nova where no binary can be found. It will be the same for the recurrent solar micronova. And while your top thing to watch today is last night's climate video, our disaster playlist has more information on the solar event and how the first chemical signs of its oncoming have already begun on the sun. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.